What's up everybody, Dave Mays here, reviewing the RX-0 Mark II. Now, this footage that you're looking at right now is actually being shot on the new Sony RX-02, and we're gonna keep it that way. We're actually gonna shoot as much as we possibly can with this camera. The only footage that is not going to be shot on the RX-0 is gonna be B-roll of the camera itself. We only have one, so the footage that you're seeing right now is being shot on the Nikon. Hi Nikon, you're filming me. So. Every once in a while we will jump to this angle here, but for the most part we will stick with all the B-roll being shot on the RX-02 and all the talking bits being shot on the RX-02. This camera is really similar to its predecessor, the RX-0, but we gain a lot with this camera that is maybe more under the hood and obviously we do get that amazing selfie screen. But the main reason that we've decided to shoot this entire video on this camera is because Sony is claiming that it's really an addition to your real camera. This is more of a B camera to an A7 or even an A camera in a scenario like this where you're a vlogger or you're shooting a YouTube video rather than this camera being a GoPro competitor. So let's talk about the specs of the ARC-02. The ARC-02 has a 15.3 megapixel one inch sensor. There is a Zeiss 24 millimeter equivalent F4 lens on this camera. Now, unfortunately, the aperture is not able to be adjusted. You're kind of just stuck at F4. So you're gonna have to use an ND filter to adjust your exposure when you're shooting. One of the new additions to this camera is it's able to do 4K internally. The old version could only do 4K externally using a Atomos recorder, for example. And that was fine for professionals. A lot of people mounted these inside of cars and were doing 4K for movies and TV shows. But for a situation like this, it's kind of dumb to carry around a massive Atomos recorder just to use this camera in 4K. I think it's designed to really be a small form factor camera. You could still use it if you want the 8-bit 422 instead of the 8-bit 420, but for me, I like using it without the recorder and the fact that they've included 4K internally on this camera is a welcome addition. There is no 4K 60, however, it's a maximum frame rate of 30 frames per second in 4K. But while we're on the topic of high frame rate, this camera can do it, and it can do it very well at 120 frames per second in 1080p. If you go down to a lower resolution, you can actually shoot up to 960 frames per second. Now, I would never recommend shooting in this mode for something really professional. It does look kind of noisy and there's a lot of image issues, but man, it's pretty fun to shoot something at almost a thousand frames per second. And by the way, if you want to shoot at a thousand frames per second, you can if you switch over to the PAL mode. Now, the most recognizable upgrade to the RX-02 is that flippy selfie screen, which I'm using right now to see myself. Now I will say when I'm shooting 4K, the image does go black. I'm looking at a naked image right now. I was able to see what I was filming when I first started filming, but as soon as a couple of seconds passes, it does go to a black screen. This may be due to the overheating issue that you would have with the 4K mode, which is not a problem on this camera. You can record 4K for an extended amount of time without having any overheating because it's using a new processor inside this camera that allows for 4K without any overheating. But I do wish that the image would not cut out when I'm shooting 4K. I don't know if that's a feature that I'm just not seeing in the menus. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong on that, but it's not that big of an issue because that leads to my next point about this camera, and that is the autofocus system, which does work, but it's only in a single point system. Basically what that means is when you push the trigger for record, the camera does focus on your face or focuses on an object and it stays locked on that for the entire time. So as you can see, my face is in focus because I haven't moved from the point where I hit record, but as I move closer to the camera, it's not doing any type of continuous autofocus. Hey, welcome back to personal space. So it is kind of a pain in the butt to uh, deal with that. All you gotta do is just hit stop on your record button when you're filming and when you're changing your shot. The reason that Sony has designed the lens like this and the reason that there is no continuous autofocus is because this camera is designed to be completely shock proof. Which leads me to my next point about this camera and that is the fact that it is rugged. It is waterproof and it is extremely drop proof. The technical specs on that are it's waterproof up to 33 feet feet, it's dust proof, crush proof up to 440 pounds of pressure, and it's shock proof up to 6.5 feet, which I guess means if you drop it and you're somebody that's seven feet tall, you're probably gonna be okay. And because it is waterproof, you can use it like a GoPro. Again, it's not a GoPro replacement. It's not even something that I should compare to the GoPro because it's so different, but you could mount it on a surfboard if you wanted to. But again, it is not a GoPro. This is not something that you can compare to an action camera because it's got a large sensor. It's doing a lot of pro features 
and it's completely different than an action camera. There is stabilization built into this camera. It's electronic only. There's no kind of IBIS built into this sensor. That would be pretty sweet. The stabilization built in is not terrible. It's definitely passable, but I wish it was a little bit better. There is a new app from Sony that's pretty cool where you can import the footage and it uses, I think, the accelerometer data of the camera and applies a stabilization on top of your footage. It does crop in a little bit and sometimes it looks a little wonky, a little bit weird, but hey, I mean, it is there if you need it and it doesn't look terrible, but I think warp stabilizer inside of After Effects or Premiere would probably do a better job. Another feature of the RX-02 that I really love and that a lot of video professionals love is the fact that there is actually a mic input on this camera. It seems like a simple request, it seems like a simple thing, but the RX-100, which is a very similar camera to this, does not have a mic input at all. So having a mic input on a camera of this size that's also crush proof, waterproof, is pretty amazing. The RX-0, when it comes to low light, is actually pretty amazing. It's nowhere near what a full frame camera can be, like the A7S or the A7 III, but it's way better than the action cameras that we've tested it with. I really wish, though, that the lens was a little bit faster. F4 is giving us a, a lot of limitations, and the RX-100, for example, has a 1.8 lens on it. So if you need better low light and you want a camera of this size, the RX-105 is kind of a better option. We've got S-Log2 on this camera. I'm shooting in the Cine profile right now with Pro Color turned on, and I don't really think you should shoot in log on this camera. The 8-bit is just not very good. It falls apart when you shoot at that. If you want to shoot log, I would recommend using an external recorder. So I'm doing a vlog test right now with the RX-02 using the Manfrotto tripod, not a Gorillapod. The reason I'm doing that is because this is a 24 millimeter equivalent lens, which typically is not wide enough for a proper vlog. You kind of want a 16 to 35 equivalent. So it is a shame that it's not as wide. I wish maybe I could put an adapter on here or something, but it does look really good at this distance. I'm also using my chest as a uh, stabilization system. Basically, if the audio sounds rather decent, then this is actually a pretty practical setup. So can you replace your actual big body mirrorless camera with the RX-0 if you're a YouTuber or filmmaker? Yes and no. I think it depends on what kind of content you do, but technically you could get away with it. The footage that we got with this camera is pretty impressive and the flexibility of having a waterproof, crush-proof, tiny little body with a flip screen with decent video quality, might input, all those things combined, really makes it a amazing option for your main camera. The problem that I had with it shooting around here at the beach and just around town was the fact that the menu system is really kind of small and minuscule, it's hard to navigate. Also, I just found that it was hard to judge my exposure and judge my image because the screen is the postage stamp size and it's not the best resolution. And technically you could use a monitor like the Atomos Shinobi or the Ninja 5, but then it kind of defeats the whole purpose of this camera of being small and lightweight. Another thing, when I looked back on the footage on my phone of especially the vlog test that I did, I noticed that the stabilization on this camera is really weird. I shot everything manual at the proper shutter speed at a 50th of a second, and I was even using the Polar Pro ND kit to make sure everything was as exposed properly as it could be, and the footage just looked kind of blurry and the stabilization just looked a little weird, so I may turn that off if I'm gonna use this camera, which makes it even more challenging to stabilize. The slow motion on this camera is pretty impressive. I personally really like the 120 1080p mode. That's probably the mode that I would shoot in the most, but the 960 frames per second option is there if you want something that's really unique, really different. Again, the image quality kind of falls apart, and the buffer that the camera has to take in order to process that is kind of annoying. One other thing that I forgot to mention when I was talking about the spec is that this camera has the time-lapse feature built in, which is A+. Sony has removed that from a lot of their newer cameras, but they've started adding it back with the A6400 and now the RX-02. So hopefully we'll see that in the future with newer cameras, hint, hint, A7S III. Now I do understand why Sony made the lens focus in the way that it does, but when you're actually shooting with it, that's probably the most annoying feature of this camera. Also, I think an F4 lens is very limiting. This camera really can only be used outside and not indoors. And that's where the RX-105 really shines. That lens has a 1.8 maximum aperture on the same sensor. So if anything, you wanna pick up this camera and an RX-105. 
pros and cons to everything, I guess. Overall, I'm really happy with this camera and I'm definitely going to be keeping one in my bag. I really think that Sony has knocked it out of the park with this update with the RX-02. It's way better than the first version. And now I can safely say that I highly recommend this camera to anybody who needs a portable video camera that can kick butt. What do you guys think of the RX-02? Did you notice that this was shot on a tiny little portable camera or did it look like a real camera? Let me know in the comment section below if the quirks of this camera outweigh the fact that it's small and portable. Also, if you made it to the end of the video, that means you're a super fan. So hit the subscribe button, enable the bell notifications if you have not done that already. Once again, I'm Dave Mays. This is an actual Blackmagic pocket camera that can fit in my pocket because it looks so good. It's like Blackmagic, but it's not Blackmagic. It's made by Sony. See you next time.